Hi guys, I will explain a ply steer from in plane deformation from orthopedic plate to summary. Here I have a quiz for you. Uh, what is the correct description about the deformation on the rectangular shape of composite plate with a steel cord at angle? Number one, it keeps rectangular shape. Uh, during the extension or compression. Number two, it cannot keep the uh, rectangular shape uh, during the extension or compression. Here we have an overview of ply steer. The root cause of ply steer are tire belt deformation and the tire block deformation. Uh, speaking about the tire belt deformation, uh, there are two root causes. First one is in-plane stiffness coupling, and the second one is out-of-plane stiffness coupling. Uh, those two are the main effects uh, to produce the ply steer. In this video, I will explain the in-plane stiffness coupling first. The rest of the topics will be discussed in the upcoming videos. Uh, let's talk about the deformation of orthotropic plate. Orthotropic plate has mechanical properties that are different in two mutually perpendicular axes. A green line stands for the steel cord reinforcement. In this example, the extended length of the left tie is shorter than uh, that of the right tie at the same amount of extension force because the direction of a steel coat is different. These two axes are called principal axis. Principal axis here and here. The important characteristics of a principal axis are firstly, the normal stress applied to the plane perpendicular to the principal axis do not produce the shear stress. And secondly, two stresses parallel to the two principal axes are corresponding to the maximum and the minimum normal stresses, respectively. Any stress distribution with arbitrary axis can be described by the stresses of the principal axis and the angle between principal axis and that arbitrary axis. Therefore, the mechanical properties uh, depend on orientation of axis at the corresponding point in the plane. Let's think about the orthotropic plate of which axis is not corresponding to the principal axis. In this picture, a blue x and y axis are the principal axis. Mechanical properties uh, go much different uh, when you choose the red x and y axis rather than principal axis of blue x and y axis. Uh, let's think about the deformation at the various code angles. Uh, normally, uh, for the practical reasons, uh, principal axis of tire belts uh, don't coincide with the longitudinal and the lateral axis of tire. Uh, for example, a steel cord of tire belts have some angle uh, to the tire axis. Uh, taking the positive angle theta clockwise and the load extension force shown in the picture, uh, deformation shapes are different depending on angle theta. Uh, when the theta is 70 degrees, corresponding shape is a red parallelogram here. Uh, we have a green one for 45 degrees, a blue one for 20 degrees, and so on. As you can see, uh, extension force along the x-axis produce uh, the longitudinal deformation in this direction. And also, shear deformation uh, with some angle, depending on the chord angles. 
The same thing happens uh, when the shear forces are applied. Uh, the shear forces produce the shear deformation. Also, longitudinal deformation at the same time. Uh, this is called in-plane stiffness coupling. Let's think about the deformation of also tropic plate uh, when x and the y axis are corresponding to the principal axis. If you if you extend extend the plate along the principal x axis uh, with the simply supported end condition, uh, like the uh, middle in this picture, the lateral deformation is all the way the same along the longitudinal x-axis, uh, but the lateral deformation uh, will be different along the longitudinal x-axis uh, with the clamped ends condition. Uh, but nonetheless, its shape is still a mirror symmetric about the longitudinal axis. Let's think about the tension of a corded composite plate. What if you extend the plate uh, with the steel cords uh, not along the principal x-axis uh, with the simply supported and the firmly clamped end conditions respectively uh, like this picture. Uh, the composite rectangular plate uh, with the steel cord at the angle uh, will deform to parallelogram shapes uh, with the simply supported ends. It shows skewed deformation, uh, but has the same lateral dimension all the way along the x-axis and the y-axis. On the other hand, a lateral deformation uh, will show the curved shape along the longitudinal x-axis uh, with the clamped ends. Uh, this shape uh, can be confirmed also in the book of Mechanics of Composite Materials, 2nd edition, uh, page 98, uh, written by uh, Robert Jones. How about the compression of a corded composite plate? Compressing that the plate uh, shows a similar behavior to extending. Uh, the composite rectangular plate uh, with the steel coat at angle will deform to the parallelogram shape uh, with the simply supported ends. It shows the skewed deformation uh, but has the same uh, lateral dimension all the way along the x-axis and the y-axis. On the other hand, uh, the lateral deformation uh, will show the curved shape along the longitudinal x-axis uh, with the clamped ends. Let's assume the tire has only one steel belt uh, shown in this picture. A tire belt uh, has the rectangular shape uh, before inflation, but it deforms into parallelogram shape uh, when it is inflated with a high air pressure. A tire can be divided into two parts. Uh, one shape uh, with the road surface is flat, and the other shape without the road surface is round. A belt in the round shape deforms in the skewed shape and the belt in the flat region deforms a way to reduce the skewed angle because the length in the round region should be reduced in the flat region. The belt in the flat shape deforms into one of the deformation shapes as shown in the bottom of the picture. I'm not sure which one is the right shape, uh, but the transition from a round to a flat uh, generates the steering moment for all the type of shapes. I will explain that for three types of deformation, small extension, compression, and distortion. As the first example, let's think about the small extension. Uh, let's assume the elongation of a belt is reduced as the red shape 
and the flat region compared with the green shape corresponding to the round region. Uh, this picture is much exaggerated to help your understanding. Deformation will be much less in reality. A small orange arrows shows the required displacement of tire belt from round to flat region. Uh, let's pay attention to the direction of displacement. A displacement of reading half uh, contact patch produces the big arrow of yellow resultant force to the right and that of following half produces the other yellow resultant force to the left. Uh, with respect to the x-axis respectively. Uh, therefore, all those forces produce the steering moment of violet color here. Uh, this means longitudinal compression force produces the shear force. That is the in-plane shear in-plane stiffness coupling. Our second case is compression. Let's assume the belt is compressed as the red shape in the flat region uh, compared with the green shape corresponding to the round region. Uh, the same as the previous example of small extension, displacement of reading half uh, contact patch produces uh, the yellow resultant force uh, to the right and that of following half uh, produces the other yellow resultant force to the left with respect to x-axis respectively. Therefore, all the forces produce the steering moment of violet color. Uh, this means, again, longitudinal compression force produces the shear force, that is the in-plane stiffness coupling. Third case is distortion. Let's assume the belt is compressed and distorted as the red shape in the flat region compared with the green shape corresponding to the round region. Uh, the same thing in the previous case happens and we end up with the yellow resultant force couples as before. On top of that, uh, distortion produces the lateral displacement marked by small blue arrows and consequently a couple of big blue resultant forces are produced. Therefore, all those forces produce the steering moment of a violet color. This means, again, longitudinal compression force produces the shear force that is the in-plane stiffness coupling. The answer to the quiz is, it cannot keep the rectangular shape uh, during the extension or compression. Here we have a summary. Also, tropic plate has mechanical properties uh, that are different each other in two mutually perpendicular axes. As the characteristics of the composite plate with the steel code at angle, when it is loaded with in-plane force, its deformation shapes go different depending on the code angle size. It will deform to parallelogram shape with the simply supported ends, but deforms to the curved shape along the longitudinal x-axis uh, with the fixed ends. Stiffness coupling uh, produces uh, between actual stress and shear stress. If you watch the previous videos, you can easily understand the upcoming videos. In the previous video, E0029, I explained the relationship between direction of conicity and tire deformation. Recently, I explained the characteristics of conicity and the ply steer. Conicity is the manufacturing problem, and the ply steer is the design problem. The next video 
is the quantity and the price tier, part 5. I will explain the hour of plane deformation of the tire belt. You can catch the brand new video by free subscription. So, uh, what are you waiting for?